Hi. A quite recent report that you might have seen in the media is that Poland retreated from an international declaration aimed at protecting women against violence. The news was often brought in a manner that suggested that some very extreme government very bombastically just retreated from this treaty because you know they like violence against women or something like that. This video will explain the reality of the situation and show you why these types of news reports are very one-sided and proper propagandistic and don't tell the entire story. As an example I will take an article created by the NOS, the Dutch tax-funded state media outlet, quote, Poland wants to withdraw from treaty that combats violence against women. But first we will take a look at what exactly is written in this specific treaty that the Poles are against. The name of this treaty is the Istanbul Convention and if you read through it, which I completely recommend, you will find out that it is a treaty which doesn't just combat violence against women but also prescribes certain other things. Article 1 Purposes of the Convention 1b Contribute to the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women and promote substantive equality between men and women including by empowering women. Now we all know how the word equality can be used for all kinds of other purposes which have nothing to do with violence. For example if there are more men working in ICT than women this is a form of inequality, inequality of outcome. So can some activist judge take this paragraph and demand that software development companies must stop hiring men in order to create equality of outcome between the two groups? Article 3 Definitions For the purpose of this convention, gender shall mean the socially constructed roles, behaviors, activities and attributes that a given society considers appropriate for women and men. So you can already see here that the this document is consistent with the ideology propagated within the field of gender studies. It defines gender as a social construct and this is 100% wrong. Gender is not a social construct. It is a real biological reality. That doesn't mean that there aren't people who deviate, there are. But the gender is not a social construct. And this false claim and its wider implications is something that not only the Poles but also many people in Spain and Latin America call gender ideology because this wrong claim is being taught to children within the education system. As you can see if you go to chapter 3 prevention, article 14 education. 1. Parties shall take where appropriate the necessary steps to include teaching material on issues such as equality between women and men, non-stereotyped gender roles, informal curricula and at all levels of education. And two parties shall take the necessary steps to promote the principles referred to in paragraph one in informal educational facilities as well as in sports, cultural and leisure facilities and the media. And if you then scroll back a bit to article 12 of the same chapter you will read the following in paragraph 1. Parties shall take the necessary measures to promote changes in the social and cultural patterns of behavior of women and men with a view to eradicating prejudices, customs, traditions and all other practices which are based on the idea of the inferiority of women or on stereotyped roles for women and men. So this means that if a young woman is an amazing mother for her three children then this is something that should not be seen as something positive and something beautiful but instead as a tradition and a stereotype that should be eradicated. This is social engineering and I dare say that this will lower birth rates which will lead to population decline. Let's now go back to the article created by the Dutch tax-funded state media. Quote, Poland is planning to withdraw from the so-called Istanbul Convention. The Polish Minister of Justice announced this. This human rights treaty from the Council of Europe is aimed towards preventing and combating violence against women. So this is already the first lie in the article. As I just showed you, the Istanbul Convention is a document that prescribes much more than that. And it also contains very ideological points, which have nothing to do with violence against women. So the NOS is already being dishonest in the very first paragraph of the article. They are not describing accurately what this document is, and therefore in the rest of the article, aren't honest about why the Poles want to get rid of the document. Because if you don't tell the people what it is, then the people don't learn why the Poles want to get rid of it. Let's continue. Quote, Tomorrow the Polish government will formally activate the process of withdrawal from the
the treaty. Quote, it contains elements of an ideology that we view as damaging, says Minister Ziobro. According to the Polish government, women are already sufficiently protected as a result of reforms during the previous years. What ideology is the Polish minister talking about? The article of the NOS doesn't tell. So if you are an everyday Dutch person who doesn't take the time to actually read these treaties, based on this sentence you will think that the quote ideology that the Polish minister mentioned is the ideology of not abusing women or something like that. The reader of the article will think that the Polish minister is some kind of religious maniac who views not abusing women as some kind of special ideology. The article continues by mentioning that thousands of people, especially women, are protesting against the plans. Quote, treaty does not respect religion. The conservative government party PIS has strong ties with the Catholic Church and campaigned on reducing LGBTQ rights. The party dedicated themselves towards traditional norms and values, the Polish family and the Polish identity. Quote, according to the Polish government, the treaty does not show respect for religion. Also, the party does not agree with the prescription that in schools attention should be given to gender-related topics. Attention should be given to. We've just seen, however, in the document that the education system must, quote, teach non-stereotypical gender roles to children, work towards the eradication of traditions, and that the gender in this document is defined as a social construct. It is about teaching wrong ideas which stem from ideology to children. So the sentence attention should be given to gender-related topics is a misrepresentation of what the Istanbul document really says about the education system. So the Dutch state media is again lying here. Let's finish this article. Quote, the treaty has been signed by over 40 countries. Also the Netherlands ratified it in 2015. In the treaty it says that countries should work to prevent violence against women and protect victims. So they basically finish the article with the same lie that they started the article with by not being honest about the content of the treaty. So this is how most of the media outlets in Western Europe lie and misrepresent in order to smear those nations that do not want to follow the path of giving away sovereignty to international entities. The goal of this article is to smear Poland so that people in the Netherlands get a very bad image about the nations that protect their national sovereignty. This article has a title which contains a half truth. Then they repeat this half truth immediately in the first paragraph of the article. They then only give one sentence of what the Polish Minister of Justice said, but which doesn't provide any explanation of exactly what the Poles are against. They then very casually mention something about LGBTQ, which in itself is a very weird term without any further explanation. They then tell another lie slash half truth about what exactly the party disagreed with, and then they conclude the article with the same lie that they put in the title of the article, as well as in the first paragraph. So this lie they repeated three times. And it actually goes even deeper than this, because if a Dutch reader doesn't understand how the UN and the EU and other supranational entities are using these type of international treaties in order to gradually create a supranational legal system, which is completely detached from any nation state, then this reader also can't understand how they use these type of documents in order to move the entire continent into the direction of some kind of empire instead of a collection of free nations. So even if this document would really only be about physical violence against women, then given the fact that such violence is already against the law in Poland, it would still make sense for the Poles to want to get rid of this document in order to protect their own national sovereignty. And this important context is completely lacking from this article, and therefore this article does not truly inform the Dutch public about the reality of the situation. Natomiast w tej konwencji znalazły się też zapisy o charakterze ideologicznym, które nie akceptujemy i które uważamy za szkodliwe. By nie być gołosłownym, jednym z nich jest konstruowanie pojęcia tak zwanej płci kulturowej, społeczno-kulturowej w opozycji do płci biologicznej, czyli doprowadzenie do wniosku, że biologia nie determinuje tego, czy ktoś jest kobietą, czy mężczyzną, tylko że to jest kwestia jakiegoś wyboru społeczno-kulturowego, który każdy może dokonywać. Z tym jest związane, z tym ideologicznym założeniem też i nakaz, by zmieniać edukację dzieci w szkołach i w programach tych pozaszkolnych w zakresie tego rodzaju właśnie nauki postaw i 
przekonań młodego polskiego pokolenia uczniów, by przyjmowali tego rodzaju fałszywe z gruntu naszym zdaniem założenia, że płeć biologiczna to jest jakaś, jakiś archaizm, a tak naprawdę wszystko sprowadza się do płci społeczno-kulturowej. No my tego poglądu całkowicie nie podzielamy i go odrzucamy. I o to tutaj chodzi.